This led to the second fanfiction project, a study in Sherlock. Based on input from students, we moved from The Hobbit to the Sherlock Holmes stories and gave students more options to be innovative. Because the Sherlock Holmes stories were mysteries, they were all required to follow the genre of detective fiction and to have Sherlock Holmes solve a mystery. The fan fiction was still to be written collaboratively in groups of three to six, but students were encouraged to be more innovative. They could tell a new mystery in the original universe of the story, Victorian London, or they could tell a new mystery or retell an old one in an entirely different alternate universe. In preparation, students participated in in-class fanfiction writing workshops and were assigned to read examples of Sherlock Holmes fanfiction in addition to several actual Sherlock Holmes stories. The resulting 16 pieces of fanfiction stories were on average 5,726 words long. Ten were published to private blogs, and six were published to the Fanfiction Archives Archive of Our Own or fanfiction.net, with the hope of perhaps eliciting feedback and responses from actual online fans. Innovation in the stories took several forms. There were several set in Sweden, including this one, The Hound of the Northern Lights, which was a retelling of the Sherlock Holmes mystery, The Hound of the Baskervilles, but was set in northern Sweden. Students collaborated to find a way to sweetify the story, changing characters' names. For example, the Baskervilles became the Beskerströms, but also imagining ways two Englishmen like Sherlock Holmes and John Watson would make sense of Swedish customs and behavior as they went about solving a mystery far north inside the Arctic Circle. Other groups innovated by setting the Sherlock Holmes characters inside another universe they were fans of or were more familiar with. One example of this was the story Nowhere to Hide, which imagined Sherlock and John in the 1960s as characters in the cartoon series Scooby-Doo, a cartoon about a group of young people, the Mystery Gang, and their dog, Scooby-Doo, who solve crimes. This mixing of universes allowed students who were less interested in Sherlock Holmes to find a way to engage with the project. As one student wrote, My interest in Doyle and the Sherlock Holmes world is still at an intermediate level. On the other hand, my knowledge of the Scooby-Doo universe is far greater, and I could enter that verse much easier than the universe of Sherlock Holmes. As a child, I loved the characters of the Mystery Gang, and therefore I really enjoyed this task. Once again, the writing of fan fiction led to vocabulary development. In particular, many students commented on the challenge to their vocabulary or variety of English. As one student explained, First off, I'm highly Americanized in my English use, and I blame Hollywood. It's been a welcome challenge to write in British. My biggest inspiration has once again been the BBC show. I truly enjoyed using the word foggiest in a text, and it is now part of my vocabulary. My American is being invaded. The British are coming. On a final note, this fanfiction project also helped some students develop a deeper awareness of literary techniques, which they were able to identify in Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes mysteries to apply to their own stories. Here's one student's reflection, which highlights the close relationship between language and storytelling that she became aware of. Doyle writes also quite linear with Watson's first-person narrative, which contributes to maintaining the suspense, since Watson, as a limited narrator, is many times as clueless as the reader is, which I tried to keep in mind at all times. I also tried to give my writing a variable rhythm, slowing it down with descriptions sometimes, and speeding it up with action verbs at other times. These specific examples show how fan fiction can be integrated into classroom teaching for the purpose of language development and literary learning by requiring a close connection between reading and writing. This concludes this week's lecture on using technology for reading. We thank Professor Chappelle and her colleagues for this intriguing presentation and hope you found the associated activities useful as you explore the use of technology on your own.